Five years ago, renowned physicist Stephen Hawking passed away, leaving behind a legacy of groundbreaking discoveries and unfinished theories. Hawking's death generated uncertainty among scientists and enthusiasts in the world of science. Since the English theoretical physicist and cosmologist was no longer present to develop his theories, rumors arose about these theories. But the family of the late scientist decided to confirm some of them to put an end to the speculation. One of Stephen Hawking's most significant contributions to science was his proposal that black holes emit radiation and gradually evaporate until they disappear in a massive explosion. This radiation is known as Hawking radiation, and it poses a challenge at the intersection of general relativity and quantum physics. General relativity describes gravity on a large scale, while quantum physics applies to subatomic particles. Recently, researchers from the University of Sussex proposed possible solutions to this problem in an article published in Europhysics Letters. The problem relates to quantum effects on the mass of black holes, which can have an impact of 10 followed by 16 zeros. Black holes form when massive stars collapse at the end of their lives, using up their fuel from nuclear fusion. This causes the collapse of the core and an extreme curvature of space-time at a point known as the central singularity, which has not yet been fully understood by physicists. At the outer edge of this curvature is the black hole's event horizon, where nothing can escape, including light. According to Calmy and Hawking's research, pairs of particles are randomly generated at the event horizon. One of these particles falls into the black hole undetected, while the other escapes and is known as Hawking radiation. When the particles emerge, they maintain opposite charges to comply with the law of conservation of energy. These particles annihilate each other, but if one of them manages to escape, the remaining energy deficit is made up by the mass of the black hole. The evaporation of a black hole is a gradual process in which Hawking radiation is emitted and its mass is depleted. This radiation is thermal and contains no information about the object that emitted it. This poses a problem, as calculations suggest that information about the contents of a black hole would be lost during its evaporation. This challenges the unitarity principle of quantum mechanics, which implies that the progression of events can be reversed. If Hawking's proposition is correct, we would have to revise both quantum mechanics and Einstein's theory of general relativity. Hawking's work showed that black holes emit radiation, lose mass, and are not stable entities. These insights have implications beyond black holes. The calculations revealed that black holes emit radiation in all directions, balancing the energy lost by their mass, following the famous equation E equals mc squared. In a new research paper, there is a common misconception about Hawking radiation, popularized by Hawking himself in his book A Brief History of Time. Hawking described that the universe is full of pairs of particles that appear and disappear due to quantum field theory and the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. In the presence of an event horizon, one member of the pair can fall into it while the other escapes, emitting particles outside the horizon. However, Hawking recognized that this representation is not to be taken literally and is just a convenient way of describing the mechanism of thermal emission and area diminution. In his 1988 book, Hawking presents the idea of Hawking radiation literally, but it is important to understand that it cannot be taken literally. The appearing and disappearing particle-antiparticle pairs are not actual particles but rather computational tools that represent fluctuations in the underlying fields. Hawking radiation consists mainly of low-energy photons arranged in a blackbody spectrum. Massive particles, such as neutrinos and antineutrinos, are too heavy to be produced by real black holes. The actual explanation for Hawking radiation is based on the disparity in the quantum vacuum between regions of space with different curvatures. This disparity leads to the generation of blackbody thermal radiation. Also, Hawking radiation is not limited to black holes with event horizons. 
Hawking radiation can be calculated throughout space, and an interesting disparity is observed when compared to the expected energy density. Hawking radiation does not originate only at the event horizon, but also in regions close to it, within about 10 to 20 Schwarzschild radii. Furthermore, radiation is emitted throughout space, even at significant distances from the event horizon. The amount of radiation emitted is greater in regions with steeper curvature, implying that lower mass black holes emit more radiation and decay faster than higher mass ones. The curvature of space near the event horizon of a small, low mass black hole is more pronounced than the curvature near the event horizon of a larger, high mass black hole. The temperature of the Hawking radiation is inversely proportional to the mass which means that an increase in mass results in a decrease in temperature. Furthermore, the luminosity or power radiated by a black hole is inversely proportional to the square of its mass. A tenfold increase in the mass of a black hole results in a decrease in luminosity by a factor of 1 slash 100. The evaporation time of a black hole is proportional to its mass cubed. A black hole 10 times as massive as another will persist for 1,000 times longer before its complete evaporation. The curvature of spacetime at a given distance from a mass does not depend on mass density or the presence of an event horizon. Let's imagine an intriguing scenario where the sun is instantly replaced by an object of the same mass but different physical sizes. Except for the interior of the sun, the curvature of space does not differ significantly between a star, a white dwarf, a neutron star, or a black hole. Beyond a certain distance, around 700,000 kilometers in this case, the curvature properties of space-time remain constant regardless of the object, regardless of whether it has an event horizon or not. Hawking radiation is not limited exclusively to black holes, but can manifest around any massive object in space-time, although the event horizon plays an important role in Hawking's original explanation. Subsequent investigations in different dimensions have shown that this radiation persists in curved space-time, regardless of whether an event horizon is present or not. The event horizon acts as a boundary that determines what radiation can be captured and what can escape. This boundary would be different for each massive object we consider, such as a black hole, neutron star, white dwarf, or star. However, regardless of the specific boundary, there will always be a fraction of escaping radiation determined by the mass and radius of the object. The presence or absence of an event horizon has no special meaning in this context. In this article an analogy is established between the Schwinger effect in electromagnetism and Hawking radiation. The Schwinger effect describes how matter can be generated from pure energy in the vacuum of space by creating a strong electric field. Similarly, in the gravitational context, the background of curved spacetime is used as the equivalent of an electric field, and virtual particles are produced that become real through Hawking radiation. Radiation production occurs at all distances far enough from the massive object, not just at the event horizon. Although this study does not perfectly replicate all known characteristics of Hawking radiation, it does provide a simplified model for understanding the mechanisms and conditions that give rise to such radiation. Additionally, it corrects a common misconception about the generation of Hawking radiation at the event horizon. In reality, the event horizon acts as a cutoff point that prevents the radiation generated within it from escaping. There is a specific radial production profile for this radiation, where the maximum amount of radiation is generated and escapes at a distance of approximately 125% of the event horizon radius, gradually decreasing as the radius increases. This study also opens the door to the construction of analogous systems and condensed matter to observe and quantify the effects of Hawking radiation. In summary, although not all exact features are replicated, this simplified model provides significant insights for understanding Hawking radiation and correcting previous misconceptions. Hawking radiation has consequences still under investigation for objects that are not black holes. 
It is completely unknown how it affects these objects, such as stars or stellar remnants. The possibility is raised that the emitted radiation may gradually deplete the self-gravitational energy of such objects, which could cause gravitational contraction and different results, such as particle decay or phase transitions. It is also speculated that Hawking radiation could imply that all matter eventually collapses into black holes under certain conditions, meaning that all objects could undergo gravitational collapse and decay through such radiation. However, more research is needed to fully understand these consequences and the implications for the ultimate fate of matter in the universe. Though speculative, these ideas offer a fresh perspective on a long-standing scientific problem. The concept of quantum hair has been proposed as a solution to Hawking's paradox, and details have been revealed in two separate studies, indicating that the gravitational fields of black holes retain information about their formation. The gravitational field of a black hole carries with it a mark called quantum hair, the result of the collapse of matter in the black hole. This discovery resolves the black hole information paradox proposed by Hawking in 1976, which posed the loss of information during the evaporation of black holes. Black holes were previously believed to lack observable features beyond their spin and total charge, based on Wheeler's no-hair theorem. However, the quantum hair preserves information as black holes collapse, thus solving a leading scientific puzzle. This discovery represents an important advance in the unification of Einstein's theory of general relativity with quantum mechanics. It does not require deep changes in physics, unlike previous assumptions. The quantum hair phenomenon challenges the classical idea that black hole horizons are impenetrable barriers. In quantum theory, the state of matter collapsing into a black hole continues to influence the outside as long as it conforms to experimental constraints. The identification of the quantum hair sheds light on the intricate relationship between the interior and exterior of black holes, providing insights into the deep nature of these cosmic entities. It represents a remarkable advance in our understanding of black holes and the reconciliation of quantum mechanics with general relativity. However, what do you think about these confirmed rumors? Do you think Stephen Hawking's unfinished theories have come to an end? Let us know in the comments section below.